Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here, back with another video. This is my full review of the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. I've used both of these devices since launch date, so I've got a pretty good sense of what they're all about. There are a few minor differences between both of these devices, and I will get to that later in this review. But first and foremost, we will kick things off with their physical design. The S models always represent the model before it. So just like the iPhone 4S looked like the 4, the 5S looked like the 5, and of course now the 6S does look like the iPhone 6. It is almost identical in terms of the build. We've got the lightning port connector on the bottom, speaker grills, as well as three and a half millimeter headphone jack. On the side, we do have the on and off button slash sleep button, as well as the SIM card slot tray. And on the last side, we do have the volume rockers, as well as the mute toggle switch. Maybe the only way that you'll be able to tell that you have a success is this fancy new rose gold color Apple decided to introduce. You also have the three other color options, space gray, gold, as well as the standard silver. It also has that small little S badge located on the bottom, something small to differentiate, and for me, S has always meant speed. The 6S model has updated insides. They've got the brand new A9 chip with the M9 Motion Co processor. Absolutely kills scores over on Geekbench 3. Close to doubling last year's performance on the iPhone 6. More on performance in a bit. Another updated feature on the 6S is the live wallpapers. Pressing down on the home screen will allow you to play back a small little animation of whatever's on the home screen as long as it's live. There's a couple different presets. And if you take any sort of photo, you can also set that to your home screen and it will have a bit of animation involved also. Another updated feature, which has always been good on iPhones, is Touch ID. It is now even faster than before. Lightning quick, pressing down on the home button will unlock your device. And using the phone on a day-to-day -day basis, opening up different apps, multitasking, playing games, which I'll get to later, everything is so smooth, so fluid, as it should be for a flagship. But just remember, you are paying for that performance and paying for that name of Apple. Depending where you live, whether you grab a 6S or 6S Plus, 64 gigs is the bare minimum. Trust me, do not get 16 gigs. It is just not enough in 2015. You're looking to spend close to $1,000, and that is definitely a big hit to anyone's bank account. After you've decided to dole up that money or sell your soul on a new two-year contract, you do have a very capable device. As I said, everything that you throw at the 6S whether it's gaming, 3D gaming, multitasking, the 6S just handles like a beast. And naturally, this will be one of the best performing devices of 2015 until essentially the iPhone 7 comes out next year. The newest feature or the biggest change coming to the 6S marketed by Apple is called 3D Touch. And I'm sure many of you seen this on the Apple Watch and that was called Force Touch. It operates in pretty much the same way. Pressing hard on the screen when you're performing a tap will actually bring up a quick launch menu depending on what you're doing. For example, if you're on the home screen launching one of your applications, pressing hard will give you extra options. Most of these options and quick launches are only available on iOS and Apple specific apps. We've got a few like Instagram and Dropbox that do take advantage of that, but expect in the near future, many application companies will hop on board for you to quick launch or perform a function within that app nice and quick. 3D Touch extends into almost every single area of iOS. For example, in photos, you can choose to copy, share, favorite, or delete something, essentially a quick menu tab. And I feel that 3D Touch is something that you can live without if you haven't used it yet. But if you've used a 6S and it becomes part of your day-to-day -day use, I feel going back to a non-3D Touch device, like an iPhone 6 or say an Android device, I think I would really miss it because it's so easy to use, so simple, and it saves so much time. Another big change coming to the 6S, which I think is the most important, is the brand new camera. I'm huge on taking photos, of course video, you see me here all the time on YouTube, and I think having a good camera is a make or break for a smartphone iPhones have always had really good cameras, and the time that I've used it, I've had my full camera review, which I've taken a lot of this footage from. The 6S, I think, has hands down the best camera on a smartphone to date. There's actually a video going around how the 6S has a better camera than some entry to mid-level DSLRs, and it's crazy how good quality of video and photos you can get from a smartphone. 
Front facing camera is a 5 megapixel shooter now, great for your selfie game, but still only records in 720p. The biggest thing of course, it now shoots in crispy 4K video at 30 frames per second. And here is another big hint not to get the 16 gig model because 4K files obviously are massive and it will chew through your storage like no tomorrow. In case this is your first time, navigating through the camera app is extremely simple. You've got a bunch of different options to choose from. Time lapse, slow mo, video, photo, square, panorama. Tapping on the front, you now have your front facing camera. As I said, for all of you that are crazy on Snapchat, I will leave my social media sites down below as well. Here are a few sample shots as well as video footage, all recorded in 4K. And to sum up the camera on the success, it is a beast front facing camera right now just heading out to grab some lunch but this is what the quality looks like on the success wind uh. That was my full review of the iPhone 6S models. Let me know what you think of them down below in the comments. And if you did pick up a 6S, I am so curious to see what color choice you went with. Was it the rose gold or pink like most people seem to say? Let me know down below as well. Also, if you guys like this video, be sure to go crazy on that like button as it does help me out a bunch. Subscribe to the channel as I am also giving both of these away so you wouldn't want to miss that giveaway opportunity. I will leave that link down below in the description box. I believe you have three weeks left to enter, so win rose golds. I will catch everyone else in my next episode, of course. Peace.